So today we're gonna check out some art galleries in Chinatown. And I love what this restaurant has done, having these little socially isolated booths. It's very uh, inspiring and a lot of what you'll see now in New York. And this is the first exhibit that we're checking out. And I will say one of the easier to find galleries in Chinatown, we're at Marinaro Gallery. And this is an exhibit by the artist Hannah Whitaker. Hannah has two types of art in this exhibit. She has these photographs that you see here, as well as some sculptural lamps that are down in the basement. And I don't know a lot about photography, but I will do my best to describe that these photos are single exposures that are shot with a digital camera. And she utilizes techniques that she picked up while being a commercial photographer except that she wanted to take out this sort of idealism and overly airbrushed female that's usually depicted in the media and show the full human form, so wrinkles and hair, etc. And these works are impactful and almost a little controversial <laughs> in my opinion because they straddle the line between art and design and I feel like photographers are always on the edge of that, more so than other mediums, uh, but it's, it's cool to see her directly play with this by doing things like hand painting the sides of these canvases and these bright colors. Now we're heading down into the lower level of Marinara Gallery, what I call the basement. And her works in the basement depart from the portraiture that we saw above, but they still include her characteristic UV printed images, as you can see in the hands pointing here and the arms, as well as the heads on the left. And she combines these pictures with patterns which is still mixing in more of those design elements that I mentioned above. And you can see here in the corner of the basement are lamps. And this was her first foray into sculpture. And she was inspired to create these lamps because of this situation, frankly, that we've all been in for the last year. You know, being indoors, being sad, she wanted to literally bring some light into the dark. And this was why she named the exhibit Lifelike, as a representation of all that over the past eight months, we haven't been living to the fullest and that we've been living a life that's only a resemblance of our past life. So I never actually realized that Marinaro had a sub-basement, the level below the lower level where we just were. It's, it's never been open when I've been there before, but this space has been dedicated to JAG projects, AKA curated space by Jesse Aaron Greenberg. And the show down here is titled Honest Gravy, which in the press release states, it's a showcase of new work made with immediacy and impulse without direction or deadline, but rather with curiosity and compulsion. And I kind of translated this to be a show of things that the curator finds interesting or cool to look at. <laughs> However, um, I do think there are some gems down here. A lot of these artists are fresh out of art school, um, most notably for me even though this one on the right looks so much like the Kim Dingle show that I went to. If you go and look back to um, my post about Tribeca Gallery hopping, I don't, maybe you can see some similarities there. But yeah, I thought this piece was particularly interesting. It's by an artist named Marissa Tikal. And 
And this is another favorite of mine, along with some ceramic pieces that she did. But these are by the artist Astrid Terrazas. I hope I pronounced that semi-correctly. Sorry if this part of the video makes you a little bit dizzy, <laughs> makes me dizzy too, but uh, I wanted to give a little bit of a behind the scenes look at what it's like to find and <laughs> actually venture into some of these uh, Chinatown galleries. This one in particular is super, super hidden. Um, you have to walk up five flights of stairs. The entrance is a little bit challenging to find, but we're on our way to Lubov Gallery which is a fun space and definitely has some great hidden gems. This exhibit at Lubov Gallery features two works by Marsha Pels that were made 20 years apart. And the work that you cannot fail to notice here, literally takes up the entire main gallery space, is titled Fallout Necklace and it was created in 2018. If you look closer, you can see she's featured on this crown, different world leaders. You can see Trump on there on the left, no surprise, as well as Vladimir Putin, Emmanuel Macron, Angela Merkel, and Kim Jong-un, to name a few. And overall, she's asking the question, how many suffer today from leadership's frightening impotence to hoard and consolidate wealth and power in the name of nationalism? The second piece that we see in this room is titled Pieta, and it was created 20 years prior in 1998. And this piece still questions the concept of power, as you can see in the tall dominatrix like boots and corset and gloves. And it ties together the work that we just saw, uh, the giant crown, by asking us to consider from whom do we expect compassion and who fails to deliver? Is it our leaders? Our mothers, prostitutes, criminals, what do you think? I hope you all put on your big kid trousers today because all of these shows are pretty heavy. Uh, we've been living through pretty heavy times, but this is an exhibit by Mira Shore titled Tipping Point. And this whole collection of works in this exhibition started with this one painting that says, which we'll see right here, what kind of art will we make under fascism? And the exhibit, which is a series of paintings from 2017 to 2020, is her response to this question. While a lot of artists have felt inspired to create more politically driven work during this time, history and politics have actually always been central themes in Mira's work. And overall, the exhibit captures the emotional roller coaster that she's going through, which I'm sure we can all relate to. You know, at times she's feeling very hot or passionate or outraged by the political and humanitarian crises that have been happening over the years. And at other times, she's feeling cold or almost depressed, frankly, by questioning, you know, what does it mean to be an artist at the possible end of history? You know, it's the far end of the other spectrum.
is another semi-difficult to find gallery in Chinatown. I always think I'm honestly wandering into a restaurant when it's really the lobby for the elevator that leads to this really beautiful bright gallery. And this is Downs and Ross and this is a group show titled When Above and there wasn't too much context given about this show in the press release but honestly I was just so excited to see works by Anna Park as well as Ivy Haldeman and I really love these bright works by Lauren Quinn as well. Here's a great shot of both an Ivy Haldeman work on the left and an Anna Park charcoal work on the right. I almost called it a painting, <laughs> but that's not true. And yeah, I just love the details and the contrast in Anna Park's works. And there are two in the show, one in this back room and then one in the front room, which we got a little peek of when I panned the camera over. And our final gallery of the day is actually not a Chinatown gallery, so I'm sorry for misleading you all with the title, but this is James Cohen, and it is on the border, it's in the Lower East Side, so it wasn't too far of a walk from the Chinatown galleries, but we are here to see Yinka Shoni Bar's exhibit of four of these incredible child sculptures. This exhibit is global warming and Yinka is using child figures to make us more aware and potentially have more empathy for how our actions of today will impact our children's tomorrow. And as you can see, he's replaced the children's heads with globes to replace any ideas of race or separation to really say this impacts everyone. Thank you.
Shinka is known for using his art as a commentary in general and culture, and particularly his African culture, having lived in Nigeria for many years. And as an artist with a tie to Nigeria, he was often questioned like why he didn't create quote unquote authentic African art. So he really plays with this thought throughout his practice, mostly by using this brightly patterned waxed cotton fabric that we see all of the children dressed in. And these are fabrics that are thought to be authentically African, but they're actually of Indonesian origin and they were mass produced by the Dutch and sold in vast quantities across Africa. So through by using these brightly colored fabrics that everyone thought were authentically African, Thinka is really questioning what it means to be authentically African in his work. 